Ever since pivoting from a career as a professional athlete to pursue the study of history in university and in graduate school, I've been met at every turn by the internal and external question, what are you going to do with your degree? The assumption underlying this question is a belief that one's value is understood simply through their economic labor. When your answer is medicine, law, finance, engineering, or the like, the questions and invalidation cease. Yet humanities and social science students are trained to question the conventional push back on social norms, and challenge what our time and labor mean to our feelings of fulfillment. Today, we explore just how creative we can be, reshaping our concept of career and considering the possibilities. Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin. I am a third year PhD student in history and African American studies at Yale University. And today we're going to be talking about careers and transferable skills for humanities and social science students. As a humanities student myself, I have received the question many a time of what are you going to do with your humanities degree? What is it you can do with a history degree? I've been told many a time on social media by family, friends, etc., that I'm not going to make money when I leave my degree. And this is the general response when a humanities or social science individual goes out into the world and is told that their degree does not have societal or economic value. Well, today's video is all about dispelling that belief and talking about all the skills that these students have and why it is that this misconception exists. I do want to do a separate video on history careers and the actual history of the profession, but today we're going to be talking about the general social sciences and humanities applicable skills and different career options for you as a student who may be in one of these fields. This video is also sponsored by Acadium, which is a website and service designed for you to find careers in marketing. When I think about marketing, I often think about social media marketing. So I think about Instagram, YouTube, influencers, I think about Google ads. However, marketing spans a wide breadth of different types of careers and services from graphic design to data analytics and as somebody who has worked in marketing and has built marketing teams for my own businesses personally say that some of the best people for the field of marketing come for the fields of humanities and social sciences we're going to get into the details of why that is and how it is that those skills transfer but first I want to show you a little bit about how to use Acadium to find your career in marketing first I'm going to go ahead and show you the Acadium website so you can either use this as a marketer, so somebody that is seeking out an apprenticeship or training or jobs in marketing or as a business. I've actually set up a business account on Acadium so that way I can actually use their freelancing services for my own marketing needs for my businesses. But for you, I imagine you would likely use the apprenticeship model. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and show you all of the different positions that people have here at Acadium. So you can be a marketing freelancer, so you can do data analytic work or you can do other types of social media marketing campaigns and things of that sort. You can also become an apprentice, which is where you work with a business manager who works in the space of marketing or who has marketing needs who will act as a mentor for you. And you can develop your skills as well as add that to your resume. So that way you can build out that skill set. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. So they have different courses as well as the apprenticeship and freelance options. The other thing that they offer is a variety of different courses and opportunities to learn various skills within the field of marketing. So I highly recommend checking this out. This includes things like e-commerce, how to generate an SEO strategy and all of those things that are needed in order to generate a business, especially today in the online format. And like I said earlier, they offer various full-time positions for those working in the field of marketing. So if you're looking to get hired after college, or if you're currently looking for a position, then I highly recommend checking out what Acadium has to offer. In order to check out the resources at Acadium for yourself, go ahead to the description down below where the link will be as well as in the card above. But now we're going to talk about the three different career tracks for humanities and social science students. I've broken this into three categories because I want us to think creatively about how it is that you want to envision a career as a humanities or a social science student. Unlike your counterparts that may be in engineering or computer science, where the track seems pretty natural there are for example engineering jobs directly out of college however a history student that wants to work as a historian their path is going to be through academia so that's what I'm going to be terming the natural track other roles for humanities and social science students look like being a researcher or working in a library or an archive and so this is what I'm going to be calling the connected track and the third is all about careers that you may not even been considered are applicable for humanities and social science students and this is what I'm going to be calling the 
unrelated track. So the unrelated track or the tangential track will lead you into careers that may seem like they are out of your wheelhouse, that you don't necessarily fill the requirements. However, I'm gonna be walking you through several listings for jobs and why it is that your skills as a humanities or a social science student are actually applicable for these positions and why you should shoot your shot. Now we're gonna be looking at the various types of roles that you may be applicable for as a humanities or social science student. So here I'm gonna be starting with Acadium, so looking at all the different positions that are currently being hired for. So I'm gonna go click on through. Here they have a course that will help you get started and that you can apply for in order to seek out full-time positions in the field of marketing. I'm also gonna be taking you over to LinkedIn. I think it's absolutely crucial that as a student or someone entering the job market, that you use LinkedIn in order to show who it is that you are, as well as what industries you're interested in, as well as to demonstrate all of your background as a professional, as well as all of your skills. This is important in a couple of different ways. One, it makes it so that way you are searchable, which is important for recruiters. And it is also important because it will help you figure out which types of jobs you may be applicable for. One thing that I recommend that anybody do, especially if you're in graduate school or currently in college, is to actually look at job listings about once a month. The reason being, not necessarily to change careers or to look at other jobs, but specifically to see what types of skills are being highly valued in your industry. So even though I am very happy in my PhD program, I have no intention of leaving. I plan on staying in academia for as long as it will have me. I also want to ensure that I am marketable and that I am able to find positions in other industries. I personally have professional experience working in medical device regulatory research. So I've had research positions in corporate and in med tech. And so I have other skill sets than perhaps another student might. But what I want to show you based on my LinkedIn profile and the different job listings are the different types of roles that you may be applicable for if you diversify your skill set and you learn how to market your skills as a humanities or social science student. First, I'm going to go ahead and take us into the job search section of LinkedIn. This is something that's going to be applicable for things like Acadium, as well as your alumni network for your university. But LinkedIn's also a really good place to start. What I want to show you are the different types of roles that are in what I called the connected or tangential track. A connected track would be a research position. So for example, something like this position here, university research compliance officer in the office of research at CUNY. Then I would say something that is tangential would be something along the lines of these internships that are with NGOs or are with organizations that aren't necessarily directly aligned with academia or with policy research or something that seems relevant relatively closely aligned with academia as an institution. So I'm going to go ahead and take you into a couple of different examples. So it says here that there are some part-time positions, some internship positions, but I'm looking for full-time positions. This one is actively recruiting assistant director of diversity, equity, and inclusion and accessibility. I don't think that I would be the best fit for this job, mostly because I don't think that I have the perspective that another applicant might, but I want to show you what types of requirements are in these job roles. So that way you you can see how you might be applicable for them. So here's the general description of the actual company and the role, and then the different types of duties that you'd be performing within this role. These are going to be important, especially for your cover letter and how it is that you would craft your resume if you were applying for a job. However, today, what we're really thinking about is transferable skills and how it is that you can begin envisioning your abilities as a humanities or social science student in the working world. So it says that two to three years in higher education, student affairs, or learning assistance and disability services. You you may actually be able to get this experience while you're currently in college or in graduate school. Getting involved in student services is something that I highly recommend, not just what you're learning in the classroom that's going to be applicable as a humanities and social science student, but how it is that you're getting involved on campus and other types of roles that you're having outside of your schoolwork. Now let's move on to a different role. So here we have research and content creation lead, and this is for the tent partnership for refugees in New York. They have some information about the role and the different types of skills, and they experience that they would like for you to have. So a bachelor's degree is required, so you need a college 
college degree. They would prefer that you have a master's, that you have competence in writing, that you have the ability to do copy editing. Copy editing or copywriting, for example, can be demonstrated by, for example, contributing to a blog or a newspaper, as well as doing work with websites or other types of marketing campaigns, experience that you might gain from a resource like Acadium or other types of internships may be applicable for this, as well as contributing to, for example, the journal within your department. Ability to turn complex technical issues into to easily digestible, compelling copy. This is about taking information that is highly complex and then condensing it in a way that is transferable and that can be understandable and comprehensible by somebody else. For example, if you're in the field of anthropology or sociology, you are using big theoretical frameworks in order to describe certain scenarios and you have to make that literature digestible. If you're used to condensing really dense theoretical texts, then this is something that is right up your alley. They also asked for you to have, for example, PowerPoint skills. Many other types of data analytic roles are going to ask for you to have skills, for example, in the area of Excel or Word. And so these are skills that you can gain. And we'll talk a little bit about later in the video on how it is that you can actually develop them. But here we actually have a role at Spotify. I wouldn't say that an entry level position is a senior associate. However, I have worked in multiple consulting roles. It may be suggesting this to me because of my background, but I want to go ahead and look at the role anyway, because as someone that's in graduate school, like I said, I do check job listings relatively often. With this, I can see that many of the skills that they're asking for are things that I actually know how to do already. So for example, understanding web-based team collaboration with tools like Google Suite, Trello, and Coda, those are three things that I already know how to use. So these are things that I would highlight in my resume if I were wanting to apply for a position such as this excellent writing, grammar, and a confident communicator. Humanities and social science students are trained to be solid communicators and are known for their written skills. So you'd be able to demonstrate to a recruiter or in a cover letter to a hiring manager that your abilities as a writer would serve you well in a role such as this. Here we have a role that I would say is connected to academia. This is for grant writing. If you have worked in the field of humanities and social sciences and also conducted independent research, you have experience writing grant proposals. Or if you haven't exactly written a grant proposal yet, you do know how to write an argument and how to present a research project in order to convey why you think that that project is important and why it should be conducted. Here we have a role in freelance editing. Editing looks like a variety of things. Here it seems like they want somebody who's experienced in SEO and WordPress, which is excellent because we just showed you some resources at Acadium that can help prepare you for roles such as this. What they're looking for is a freelance role, which is paid hourly, which would work well if you have acquired those skills that you can do alongside your studies. Not just about the skills that you've acquired as a humanities or social science student in the classroom, be it critical thinking skills, ability to condense information in a palatable way, and the ability to develop an argument. Another set of skills that you're going to want to acquire are those hard skills. So thinking about what types of softwares that you know how to use, and those are things that we'll talk about in just a moment. But the point of this exercise was really to show you the different types of roles that come up for a student that is in the humanities, and how it is that I would look at these various types of roles. For example, being able to communicate and write are things that are going to come naturally to you as a humanities or social science student. However, there are other skills that I want you to think about diversifying your skill set in order to make yourself as widely applicable for positions, for example, in marketing and human resources, social work, and all of those things that may be tangential to your field of study, but that you are readily prepared to take on. Now that we've talked about the various career paths that you can take, I want to talk a little bit about skill set. In the previous section, I walked you through the different skills and requirements and how it is that you can use your resume and shape your narrative in order to show that you are applicable for those roles. Now I want you to think about additional skill sets. So one thing that is not discussed with the humanities and social science students nearly enough are the different types of skills and experiences you should be acquiring throughout your undergraduate or graduate studies that will make you applicable for other careers. For example, taking a course on, for example, Coursera, Skillshare, or Google may allow you to get a certificate to actually show that you know how to use a programming language or that you know how to use Excel. These types of hard skills and your ability to use different types of softwares is going to 
be the most useful skill and the best use of your time. Because as you saw in the requirements, those are often skills that they want their hirees to have. As a humanities student, you have different types of research and critical analytical skills, but you want to make sure that you beyond the soft skills also have applicable hard skills. I highly recommend thinking about your hard skills and how it is that you can improve upon your abilities and build up your resume through experiences. This can include research positions. It can also include different types of certificates, summer programs, anything that you can do in order to bolster your skills and make it so that way you are as widely applicable through different fields of study and different types of industries as possible. And lastly, we're going to talk about marketing your skills. This often comes in the form of a resume or a cover letter and how it is that you go about networking. Engineering, business, economic students are often given many opportunities to go network with the big consulting firms or they have different types of events that they can attend in order to bolster their network. These are things that you should be attending to. You want to widen your net, you want to make sure that you're making connections both inside and outside of your industry so that way you can look for many pathways to a successful career that will make you feel fulfilled. One quick thing I want to mention however is that a career does not need to be fulfilling. I've seen many videos on YouTube that have been very well done and there's a lot of anti capitalist rhetoric going around, especially in academia, about the concept of fulfillment and career. So if you want resources on this, then you can go ahead and check out the link down below. However, if you are somebody that really gets enjoyment out of looking at numbers and data and marketing, or that you're interested in doing research, and that is something you find fulfilling, then I also want you to be able to have the tools and the skills to network in order to seek out these opportunities. I myself have had three different career pivots. I went from working as a a professional athlete to working in medical device regulatory research to now being a PhD student working towards a career as a historian. I would not have been able to do that had I not networked throughout that time with my clients and going to different types of events and making sure that I was sociable. I think that one thing that humanities and social science get as a, is saying that they don't network in quite the same way that students, for example, in computer science or economics might, but you can. You just want to make sure that you're actually seeking them out. One thing that I recommend in order to do this is to, for example, look up the law school, the business school, and try to figure out what type of events they're hosting while you're a student. Let's say you're now a postgrad and you've gotten your first entry level job and you're working in just kind of general administration, but you're looking for the next career move. The way to go about this is both obviously to apply for different positions, and I will talk in another video about how to go about that process, but this isn't the video necessarily for that. But the other thing that you can do is actually go and attend networking events and that includes going to community events, both within your city or going to networking events at a local university, or for example, looking at professional organizations and different types of community groups that have networking opportunities as well. The pandemic accelerated many opportunities for networking through virtual spaces. And on the one hand, it doesn't make it as sociable. However, it does make things more accessible. Look at various platforms in order to figure out what direction might be the best to head in. Also look at all the different resources on websites such as Acadium because they will have different positions and different people that you might want to get in touch with and also getting in touch with recruiters is another big step that you can take in order to expand your network and opportunities. In today's video we talked about the natural and sometimes tangential career tracks for humanities and social science students as undergrads as well as graduate students. I want you to think creatively about your career. I have had multiple career pivots and it has landed me in a position where I feel truly fulfilled by what it is that I'm pursuing. I've started businesses, I started this YouTube channel, and I couldn't be more thrilled that I did. And I wouldn't have been able to do that had I not taken the risk and tried various career tracks and also decided to study what I absolutely loved, which was history. We also talked about improving your skill set and networking. These are really important, especially as a humanities and social science student, because the misconception that you do not have career prospects is based on the natural assumption that there is not a natural track for humanities and social science students. And while that may be correct in that we don't have a direct path, for example, a trade degree in engineering that leads to a career in engineering, 
engineering. There are multiple creative tracks that humanities and social science students are applicable for. You just need to seek them out and think creatively about those requirements. One thing this video did not cover is how to actually apply for these positions and what that looks like. However, if that is something that you would like to see or if you would like a video, for example, on the history of the humanities and why it is that our profession has been devalued over time, I would also love to make that video as a historian. I think it's really interesting to see that evolution and specifically the policies that made that evolution take place. Comment down below if that's something you want to see and thank you all so much for watching and thank you so much to Acadium for sponsoring today's video. Again, to check out careers in marketing, go ahead and check out Acadium, which is going to be linked down below as well as in the card above. Thank you to them for the resources that they pulled together for you today for this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. Before you go, please remember to like the video and hit the subscribe button. It really helps my channel out and this summer we are heading to the archives in London, so if you want to join along for that journey, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notifications so that you're notified when I post and I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.